I've always been a big fan of keeping things as simple as possible. And I think you can really break carpet down into three basic things you need to understand. First of all, you need to know where to find the fish. And again, that's pretty simple. They're found in lakes and streams and all throughout the lower 48 states, in Mexico, throughout most of Europe and Asia, and the British Isles. Not to mention, the region is ever expanding. Secondly, once you find carp, it's important to understand the different types of feeding behavior that you're likely to encounter. And third, it's important to understand what the carp might be feeding on. We will talk a bit about equipment, and yes, it's necessary to have the skills and the technique to make the presentation to these fish, but there are a lot of other great resources out there to help you with that, most notably your local fly shop. But there are two books that anyone interested in carp fishing definitely have to read. The first one is called Carp Are Game Fish by the late great George Von Schrader. I think that George can really be regarded as the true pioneer of carping. And as a matter of fact, many of the images you will see in this video are from some of Dave Whitlock's carping adventures with George. The book takes a very fun and lighthearted look at catching carp, especially in the Great Lakes region. The second is the absolute textbook on the subject, Carp on the Fly by Barry Reynolds, Brad Beavis, and John Berryman. This is a fantastic book, and to be honest, this tape wouldn't have been possible without what we have learned from these guys. We'll talk about finding carp in lakes and streams in just a moment, but once you find carp, it's important to understand the types of feeding behavior that you'll see. Bottom line is, in order to catch carp, you're going to have to find feeding carp. And again, to keep things simple, from a fly fishing standpoint, this is usually going to happen in shallow water. The things that carp eat are primarily found in shallow water. Now that's pretty basic, and of course, there are exceptions. George Kelly and Rick Ruoff recently filmed a television show on where they were on the reservoir above the Yellowtail Dam on the Bighorn River in Montana. They were catching carp in extremely deep water on tiny little trico mayflies. Now carp certainly can be found in deep water and can be found feeding in deep water, but when this happens, they're usually going to be feeding on adult aquatic insects or emergers or items like cottonwood seeds that may have been blown into that deep water. In your carping career, you're definitely going to encounter a lot of carp that just seem to be hanging around. A lot of times they'll lay just below the surface, just kind of lounging or slowly moving along. In fact, at times they may appear to be sleeping or soaking up some rays. A lot of people call these fish sunbathers. Now these fish are typically very hard to catch, but we often still try as long as spooking one doesn't spook others. You'll also encounter what are called cruisers. These fish will move along at different speeds in a lake or a stream almost as if they're heading somewhere. A lot of times they'll cruise the shorelines or drop-offs, and at times they'll travel in circular motions, predictable circular motions, somewhat like a daisy chaining tarpon. Now these fish can be caught, although they're not the easiest. In fact, one of our guides has a couple of rules about cruisers. First of all, if it's deeper than three or four foot, he doesn't even bother to cast to them. He also says the faster they're moving, the harder they are to catch. I think that any fly fisher will tell you that catching a fish on the surface is extremely exciting and rewarding. And contrary to popular belief, carp do feed on the surface when the opportunity presents itself. When they do, they are usually gorging themselves on aquatic insects like mayflies or midges, terrestrials like ants or grasshoppers, and other food items like seeds and vegetation. Surface feeding is usually found in lakes and ponds, although I have personally witnessed carp feeding on mayfly spinners in back eddies of a trout stream and have heard the same from many anglers recently. I have also encountered midging carp, or fish cruising along the surface feeding on tiny little midge larvae and midge adults. 
Some folks call these fish cloopers, and I think cloopers represent the most challenging of all carp. 12 foot and longer leaders are required, phenomenal stealth, and phenomenal technique. These are also the spookiest of all carp, and I really think define the epitome of dry fly fishing. Imagine a carp on 6x tippet and a size 22 dry fly, probably comparable to permit fishing. You know, it's really just like dry fly fishing for trout. It can be just as or even more challenging at times, and oftentimes much less predictable. Watch as this fish comes up to inspect a food item only to turn away at the last minute. Look familiar to you trout guys? Carp will also feed in the water column on emergers and bait fish and when their food items fall into the water like in the case of mulberries. But for the most part, carp are going to be found feeding at or near the bottom of a lake or a stream. In our experience, we usually look for them in water that's less than three or four foot deep. The first thing you can look for is the actual tail of the fish as it grubs along the bottom with his nose down. If the water is shallow enough, his tail will be wagging, showing you how happy he is, just like a bonefish or a redfish on the flats. But in general, you want to look for a fish with his head down, tail up, and moving along slowly. Sometimes, he'll just look like he's hunting for food. The trick is then to get the fly to them in a natural manner without spooking them. Another technique of spotting fish is to look for muds. Fish rooting along a stream bottom often leave puffs of mud that can really help you spot them. And again, just like in salt water, we watch the muds, identify the direction the fish are traveling, and make the appropriate presentation. Especially in a stream, the presence of muds usually indicates that the fish is grubbing along the bottom for nymphs and crayfish. You'll also encounter some rambunctious carp from time to time, often jumping for no apparent reason and really they just seem to be goofing off. The guys in the book call these fish hell raisers and in our experience these fish are almost impossible to target and sometimes even harder to catch. Although Jim had some good advice for us one day. When, when you see fish jumping, carp generally jump straight out and either fall over if they're too big or just drop straight back in. But, but uh, if the fish comes straight out and just drops in, it's generally a carp and, and hopefully you can see it long enough to, to be able to tell. If it's golden yellow, you know it's a carp. And uh, I don't know why they do it, whether it's just like horses in a field, just all of a sudden taking off running and then and, and go back to feeding. You know, carp can be found just about anywhere in a stream. What, what would be some of your best advice to uh, people when they're getting out and catch carp in, uh, in streams or rivers? Uh, probably one of the biggest things I'd say is try and identify feeding fish. <laughs>